Purple Horizons is a landscape scale nature recovery project that is led and funded by Natural England and supported by our brilliant partners. Purple Horizons is um, in an area near Warsaw, but it's also part of a wider partnership called the Midlands Heathland Heartland Partnership. Both of the aims of these projects and partnerships are restoring and linking up habitats such as Heathland between Canic Chase and Sutton Park. So the Heathland itself, the whole area Places like this, Cannock Chase, Sutton Park, really small fragments of what was a huge landscape many years ago. And because you get this rare combination of plants on the site, you then get the rare invertebrates and the rare birds. So it's a really important habitat. And we tend to think of it as our tropical rainforest. And it always sounds a bit crazy to say it like that. But some of these species, particularly some of the invertebrates, they are as rare as things you find in the tropical rainforest. Now with the Heathland, over the last hundred years, it's been so fragmented, so developed, it's been turned into agriculture, forestry, and even around here, unfortunately, building land. So we're losing so much of it. So what we're trying to do now, we've all got our sites and we're trying to link them up. And we think of sites like this as Heathland stepping stones. So throughout the West Midlands, we've got Sutton Park, and then you come up to Brown Hills Common, Chasewater where we are today, Hensford Hills, all leading up to Cannock Chase. So you've got this sort of arc of Heathland sites, sort of like I say, like stepping stones, trying to link them together. So Gentleshaw Common, um, it's a triple SI, site of special scientific interest, um, and a lowland heath here in Staffordshire. Um, so it connects to the um, Staffordshire Heathland Arc um, within Cannock and usually in South Staffordshire. Um, we have volunteers here and contractors helping to look after the heathland for the wildlife. Um, so with scrub clearance, bracken clearance, um, some barrier scrapes for the invertebrates um, are all part of looking after this special habitat. We've got woodland edges and Maya habitats as well. Um, so we've got some wetter areas, some drier areas. So brilliant for a, a variety of all sorts of nature. Today we've been here for the Midlands Heathland Forum at Gentleshaw Common. Um, various organisations get together who are interested in heathlands or have something to do with looking after heathlands. And we are wandering around the site today to look at various things, um, particularly the barrier scrapes that we're getting created on site today, um, which are brilliant for the, the invertebrates such as solitary bees and wasps we have here on site. Um, so everyone gets together and we'll um, discuss how to protect these habitats for the better. It is around about 97 acres of lowland heathland. As you can see, it's got scattered scrub on here. There's ruderal vegetation, there's bracken, and then we've got the characteristic dwarf shrub heath as well. And part of this mosaic of habitats is the bare ground and early, what's called early succession. So that's where you've got bare ground and the, uh, the habitat is trying to regrow and succeed to higher states of vegetation. And this is one of the most important parts of a lowland heathland in terms of its invertebrates. Now the reason we want lots of different species on the lowland heathland or even in the general landscape is that they're part of our natural fauna. We've got around about 500 plus uh, native species of bee and wasp in the UK and quite a lot of those species are actually quite rare because they're really fussy. And if we were to lose some of those species it would might have a detrimental impact on the food chain and the food web because some of these specialist uh, invertebrates some of the solitary bees and bumblebees which nest in sort of more tussocky vegetation but they're still applicable to heathlands they only forage on certain types of flowers or some of the wasps will forage for on, only on certain types of beetle larvae or flies and that can upset the balance within the countryside if they are then removed from it and of course Particularly when we look at, say, predatory species like the wasps, they can actually help keep pest species under control. And with the uh, bees and the bumblebees, as we all know, they're fantastic pollinators. They collect pollen. And while they're collecting pollen, they're actually pollinating the wildflowers. We are at Pelsall North Common, uh, which is very near Walsall, and it's managed by Walsall Council. Um, we've seen some uh, quite impactful and uh, almost looks destructive um, habitat creation works today so it's quite interesting to see these works and maybe you think about climate change and you think oh we need to plant more trees but in this situation where we've got um, Pelsall Common we've got lovely heathland sites so we want to 
sometimes we want to remove the trees in some places to open up areas and create these um, ecological niches and special sites for, for different types of animals and species. So I'm Charlie Wiley, I'm the course lead here at Whittington Heath Golf Club. This was a historic heathland and uh, the, all of this area here was an open common in, until the 1950s. But since then, the, the rough areas have colonised with secondary woodland, dominated by oak trees mainly. So they're, they're pretty much a evenly aged, unmanaged oak. Uh, but the golf club was established in 1886. As time went on, nobody really noticed that the trees were taking over and changing the environment. Some people have asked why we are pursuing the Heathland project, uh, and there are many reasons for that. Heathland golf is a preferred form of golf in England in particular. Uh, Heathland habitat lends itself to good golf courses because they are open and airy and dry, typically dry. Uh, the fairways are fast running because of the type of grass that you have. Uh, they're sustainable and they're just fun places to play golf. So in, after a year, we've had some really encouraging results. We've had uh, new heather regenerating from where we've had tree clearance. We've had regeneration from brashings and that's really good to see after only a year. It's not a perfect way to create heathland, but I think in the, in the scheme of things where heathland is, has declined so much, it could be valuable part of the national framework. If schemes like this didn't happen, we would just not get enough heathland created. So on, on the heathland sites, they're a traditionally managed landscape. So if you go back far enough, people would have lived and farmed and grazed their animals on them. So all the operations we're now doing would have been part of the traditional management, if you like. So people would have cut trees down for firewood. They'd have cut um, smaller branches to create fencing. They'd have cut the heather um, as packaging in the pottery industry and all sorts of things like that. So we've now got to replicate this. Now the grazing animals help. They, they graze the heather and the grasses. They will graze some of the small tree growth, but not a lot. And also, because it's such a public site, we can't have the number of animals we want. So we're going to get silver birch grown. Silver birch particularly, it seeds very easily, it grows fast. So we're there by hand and we're clearing it. Sometimes we can create um, habitat piles for nesting birds in clumps of woodland. But if we don't keep on top of the silver birch, it grows so fast and it shades out all the plants underneath. So the heather, the grasses, and they're what's creating this really nice, important habitat. And some of the um, other flowering species, we've got blueberry and cowberry on site. They need to grow in the open. It's open habitats. So we keep them open, we clear some of the scrub, clear some of these small trees when we keep the open habitat. And then once the habitat and the plants are right, then the invertebrates are right, and then we get the ground nesting birds. All of the heathland sites we've got and all of the country parks for Staffordshire, they're all open to the public. They all have public access on. It's really important people come here and enjoy them and appreciate them. But there's lots you can do to help. I mean, we say follow the country code, you know, take your litter home. It's really important. Keep your dogs under control. Please clean up behind your dogs. I mean, particularly cleaning up after your dog on the heathland site. It adds a lot of nutrients and it then will change the vegetation. And that's a really important thing for us to try and prevent. Um, please don't bring disposable barbecues to the heathland sites. They're so flammable and we have so many um, fires each year. We need to prevent that. But most importantly, do come here and enjoy it. And, and, and enjoy the space, the openness and, uh, and appreciate this fantastic place. But if you want to get more involved, um, a lot of your local councils, so Walsall Council, have a Healthy Spaces uh, volunteering team. Um, Staffordshire Wildlife Trust have lots of volunteering opportunities. So definitely look at our partners a websites for volunteering opportunities to help your local Heathland. Purple Horizons is now uh, in its second year. We've got a couple more years of funding but we're trying to go bigger and better and do more Heathland restoration projects. We also really want to get the community engaged. We've had some brilliant volunteers coming out to some of the sites um, but we'd really like to get more people out and enjoying Heathlands and enjoying Heathlands responsibly as well. The Nature Recovery Network aims to make more wildlife rich places, bigger, better and more joined up. 
So as part of the Purple Horizons and Midlands Heathland Heartland, we are aiming to restore these heathland habitats in the, in the West Midlands area. Mm -hmm.